Welcome to the Corporate Treasury 101 podcast. This is the third and last part of our full interview with Kurt Smith, where we discuss the ACTA, the Australian Corporate Treasury Association. Kurt is the director of Marengo Capital and vice president and technical director of ACTA, the Australian Corporate Treasury Association. Kurt has a diverse professional background, including banking as a head of derivative trading, fund management as an investment strategist, consultant with Marengo Capital, and of course, corporate treasurer. Marengo Capital is a corporate advisory company which specializes in creating and managing value. Kurt's sweet spot is in strategic treasury and corporate finance, ensuring that capital is sourced, structured, and allocated in a value-creating way. In the episode of today, expect to learn how treasury departments in Australia compare to the ones in Europe and the US, what is the role of ACTA and the different missions they have, how is ACTA getting more and more visibility worldwide lately, what are the future developments for the Australian Corporate Treasury Association, and like always, much, much more. We truly hope you will enjoy the episode. If that is the case, and when you think about how you discovered the podcast, it was probably through word of mouth, social media, or a recommendation from a friend or your favorite podcast app. And this is our ask to you. The only way people can discover our podcast and learn more about Treasury is thanks to you. So if you could follow the show, give us a review, or share the episode if you like it, it will mean the world to us. Last but not least, if you are anyhow interested into artificial intelligence and how it can transform our corporate treasury industry, join our bi-weekly newsletter, AI Treasury Insight. To do so, simply follow the link in the description or head to corporate-treasury-101.com slash newsletter. With all that being said, please welcome Kurt Smith. I think that was an absolute masterpiece in terms of how treasurers can be actually more strategic. And I love the, the view you bring on not only, well, doing the day-to-day -day operational job, which is important and the basis, as you mentioned, just to build trust in your stakeholders, different business partners, but then go the next step. And the whole thing you've explained about cash, cash flow forecasting, how can we maximize it with actual KPIs? There is another particularity with you is that you are our first guest from Australia. And we're actually super interested into understanding what are the specificities of, of the region. Can you tell us a little bit more maybe um, about Australia? What's the, the maturity of treasury department there? Maybe compare it to Europe or the US. Can you tell us a little bit more about that? Uh, I can. No, I, I think we've got a, a mixed bag in Australia. So part of the slang, we'd, we'd say it's a dog's breakfast. Um, we, we've got very large and, and sophisticated treasuries with With, with very experienced and qualified professionals. We also have, at the other end of the spectrum, we've got treasury services that are performed in smaller companies by accountants in finance department and everything in between. A again, what I think I said it earlier is that we find that people, once they join treasury, they don't tend to leave it. And so we do get uh, this higher echelon um, in Australia anyway Of, of very qualified and experienced professionals operating at senior levels. Um, but the opportunities for younger professionals can take time to, to emerge because of that, because um, you, you're waiting for the person at the top to move on in order to open up the opportunities um, as everybody sort of moves up one additional run. And if there's one thing that I've found, I don't know if it's just Australia or, or if it's um, more generally, But certainly in Australia, um, I think the younger generation is is less patient. Um, they're, they're quite keen to to go up the tree quickly, um, and and so uh, it can be a bit frustrating if there aren't the opportunities being that being released. But the labour market for treasury professionals in Australia at the moment is extremely tight. It's it's a niche um, profession. And it's extremely tight. Uh, one of my clients at the moment, in trying to build out a treasury team for them, it's taken longer than, than was hoped for. 
simply because uh, the the market is so tight. And if you want to get the uh, top ten percent, then you have to pay in in order to draw those people across. So it's um so yeah, that, that's 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 very um, very tight at the moment. Generally, about Australia, um, for those who who don't know. It's an open economy with very good financial markets, banks and professional services. So, so we're very lucky there. Got a good rule of law. The Australian dollar is is very liquid. It's one of the the most one of the more liquid currencies in the world. And part of the reason for that is uh, of our commodity exposure and our exposure to China and Japan. So, fund managers. I used to be a fund manager back in the day. Fund managers that want to get access to growth quickly will often buy Australian dollars unhedged um, because they just know that buys into world growth cycle, China doing well and non, non-Japan non Asia doing well as well. And then that just comes from our, our commodity exports. Um, so the other thing I'd say sort of characteristically, we tend to buck convention a little bit so we're, we're, we're geographically isolated down here. And as a result of that, I think we tend to embrace independence a little bit. We won't always sort of follow what, what's done elsewhere. That, that might just mean that we're, maybe we just don't like being told what to do. I, I don't know. But um, we, we do tend to probably just think of things from our own perspectives a little bit. Before necessarily testing what what's out there, uh, what's out there already. No, that's that makes a lot of sense. I like how the the geography and location have a has an uh, has an impact on this. That's super interesting. Kurt, I also believe you're the you're the vice president of the of the ACTA, right? The Australian Corporate Treasury Association. Can you tell us a bit more about this? Like, what's your role there? Uh, what is ACTA doing overall? What's what's the overall dynamic of the Corporate Treasury Association in Australia? Look, we've got a uh, we've got a really good association. We I think we're quite fortunate in that Treasury teams uh, and treasurers tend to be quite collaborative in in Australia. So there's there's not a lot of competition most people are quite helpful and so as an association what we're trying to do is 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 all the things that associations always do effectively bring an opportunity for for people to get together whether it's through you know networking events or or other um, cpd type events educational events conferences uh things like that we're trying to bring people together so that um, they will talk about treasury, um, and whether that's over a over a beer or, or lunch or whatever it might be. But we're trying to do that, uh, and so that, that people realise there's a broader network out there. And the way I've described it is, you know, in Australia the treasury teams tend to be quite small. For a large company, you might have ten to fifteen people, um, but most people are going to probably have between five and. And so I've described it as a way of basically increasing the size of your team without having to pay for it. And, and I think that is true. And, and I've come to networking late in life. Um, I, I was a woeful networker um, in part because I, I was quite introverted, so I, I, didn't really, I didn't really feel comfortable doing that. But also because I didn't see it as as something I should necessarily do, um, and and so part of that's because I'd come from financial markets, and in financial markets you you didn't generally have a great network. It was just you know where's your price, yours. Um, there wasn't really a lot of conversation uh, to be had. But I think for me, there is this real opportunity to when you come across something. If you you may not be sure about your thoughts, you might not be sure about where to proceed or what what tack to take. There is a real opportunity to pick up the phone and talk to somebody and ask them. And I've had you know examples, quick examples I can give you at a a, a company that I was trying to bring in a, a capital management strategy for, and 
as the board meeting was approaching, the CFO was getting more nervous. And so one of the better companies in Australia, um, I had someone that, that I got on very well with and, and I just said, look, I'm running into a, a bit of a problem. You know, CFO's getting a bit anxious. And they said, why don't you bring them over to us? We'll have lunch. We'll sit and have a chat. Um, and so, you know, this is one of the better capital managers in, in, in the Australian um, stock market index. And so we sort of sat down and just had a conversation and he got the reassurance that, you know, the, the type of framework that I was looking to bring in is, is the, the same sort of thing that they do. And, and so it helped him gain comfort in what we were trying to do. I also ended up with insurance at one point in, in my career as well and didn't know anything about insurance as a business. And there was talk of a captive insurance subsidiary, which I didn't know about. And I was actually standing in the line to the drinks for the ACTA conference. And the person in front of me, we just got talking and I said, oh yeah, I've got this you know, captive insurance subsidiary I've got to do. And he said, oh, we've got one. I'll put you in touch with um, with the, the the people that run our, our subsidiary and you can have a chat with him. And so I hadn't even got in the doors of the conference yet where I'd already got the value that it, it cost to achieve just because I had a contact. So it's little things like that where it's sort of like having a big team without actually having to, to have them on your books. And probably actually yeah. one thing I'll quickly say, sorry, mm-hmm. um, is that for me the, where the penny dropped for me was when I realized that the networking was about how you can help other people. It wasn't about getting things for yourself. And when I, when I turned that corner became a lot easier for me. I, I don't think I'm particularly good at it now, but I, I'm I'm always trying to, how can I help other people? Um, how can I put one person in touch with somebody else because I think they can help each other? Um, and then when you do that, it's like you, you store up all these credits. And then when you do need to ask somebody something, they're really willing to do it because you've helped them two, three, four times before. So, um, so actor is really good at doing that. So you, you brought up conferences, but for a moment, Kurt, I was going to say that it feels that beers and lunches are quite central to networking opportunities in, uh, in Australia, <laughs> which, which makes sense, right? It makes it a lot easier because the hardest part right, is getting people together when all people can turn up. And you'll find, uh, well, what we found anyway is that Women found it much harder to turn up to breakfasts, for example, because of the school runs and things like that. And so often if you can get people together over, over a lunch, it has the benefit of it's, it's free in people's time. Um, but what it also does is it provides that sort of, it, it's just more relaxed. People just relax more when, when you're you know, over a meal, or over drinks. But yeah, I think you could have been uh, referring a little bit to Australians' proclivity for, for having a beer. We, we certainly do have that, and I'm, I'm not walking away from that at all. A bit more about the association then. So you guys, I guess, host trainings and do some developmental work for treasurers as well? We do. So what we try to do is make sure that every event has an educational piece to it. So even if we will have quarterly networking drinks that'll be because it runs later at night it'll be sort of five to seven thirty or something like that but what we'll do is we'll start it with an educational piece and so we'll bring speakers that we uh we think are interesting not always in the in the treasury space it, it can be outside of that but what we're looking to do is just open people's minds have the opportunity to listen to people that they ordinarily wouldn't wouldn't listen to and see if that gives them a, an opportunity then to learn something which is you know that's really what it's all about it's it's developing professionally learning and, and with that in mind one of the things that that we we've, we've done fairly recently is to introduce a certificate in corporate treasury and that's been something that's been on the cards for us for a while it's it's quite a large ask actually pulling it all together that we've we've managed to do that and it's pitched more at less experienced professionals in treasury and that's 
uh, because that's a demographic that we're trying to attract, uh, number one. Um, so we, we're, we're hoping to get uh, people from university. We're hoping to get people who, you know, maybe they've started their careers as a broader finance person and then open the door to, to ways of getting into treasury. And the, the other reason really is we're trying to raise the bar on the whole pool of potential treasury employees. And we, we just, we want to get um, one day to the point where employers won't hire somebody in treasury unless they're a member of the association and they're, they're certified uh, as, a, as a professional that, that has a certain qualification and a certain skill level. And we've taken a lot of effort for it not just to be an academic workout. I'm very academic myself, so I don't say that in a disparaging way, but rather just saying that uh, we, we find that most people in Treasury have at least one degree. Um, so what we're trying to do is build on that with a lot of practical examples. And so we've got you know, a lot of case studies, videos of treasurers that are going through uh, particular issues and we're trying to keep it very current and and interesting where people can actually see well okay what, what does a treasurer actually have to be confronted by uh, as part of their day and and how do they go about it very cool and and what about the ACTA globally how are you guys uh, working to like branch out with perhaps other associations in other countries so we're embarking on that, I guess, um, it's early days. So what, what we're trying to do, I, I guess, is start the process and, and let people know that our doors are open. We have a relationship with some entities. There's you know, Infins in, in uh, New Zealand. Obviously, they're, you know, they're, they're an, an entity that we deal with quite closely and they uh, often attend our conferences, for example. But yeah, you know, we've had board members go to ACT events in in Scotland uh, and 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 open up some of the conversations there. I'm doing this podcast uh, with in part to try and get out and um, you know get get across to a to a different audience. And uh, you know, I've, I've also done uh, got a relationship started with Treasury Excel in in the Netherlands, and so. And Robin Page at TMI in the UK. So th- these are all relationships that are in in their very early days, but they're they're all very nice people. They're relationships that I'm hoping to um, to continue to explore over time. And if there's any any one of your listeners that that wants to reach out, I'm uh, I'm more than happy to do so. Cool. You just uh, you just dropped the big names of Treasury, indeed, Kurtz. <laughs> I'm sure. I'm sure. Now that you're part of the corporate treasury 101 family, um, I'm sure you'll be able to join a lot of the other past guests as well in a lot of ways and future. Kurt, wrapping up, we have a new section to our podcast that we want to start with you. It's a bit of a curveball. We didn't talk about it before. The whole thing is about being more strategic treasure, right? Which is a super interesting topic. I think it's, I love the idea of stop thinking of yourself as a support function, think of yourself as a value add function, right? That's and pursue that journey. I like that message track overall. In the current world and the way it's developing, technology advancing so rapidly, specifically AI, how do you think treasurers can better use potentially AI to become more of a strategic treasure? And I'm putting you on the spot so we can... Technically, I'm certainly not an expert. Uh, But what I think, the, the way I look at it is, as a, in, if I look at my own role and generally roles of people in teams, you want to be involved in things that are interesting and personally rewarding. So where I see things like, where I see technology playing, and whether that's AI or any other sort of digitization sort of process, it's about reducing the amount of time and effort that you spend on high volume, low value add activity because those things can release you technology can release you from those activities and that gives you more time to then do the low volume high value activity and i can give you a little example um 
I spoke about the insurance space. Uh, I was given an insurance business to to run um, because treasury and insurance can be together sometimes. Um, and it wasn't running very well. Uh, it had about 10 people. There were lots of complaints. There were backed up claims. It was just, it was not good. So the first thing I, I looked at was, can we contract it out? Can I just contract it out to somebody else and have a service level agreement and not have to worry about it anymore? And turns out I couldn't do that. That was the easiest solution. Um, but the other thing that we then did was a technological solution. And we brought in a, a system, it was a bes- bespoke bill, under a transformation program, that's how we funded it, to do exactly what I said. Stop people from looking at high volume, low value add stuff and focus on the bigger ticket. So in this case, don't have somebody looking at a hundred, you know, spending lots of time on a hundred dollar claim because it costs more to look at it, right? And so it's work out what's the cost of claim and then triage through digital technology, triage claims into the different categories of risk. And so by doing that, we were able to work our way through all of the backlogs, all of the complaints stopped, and we ended up with a team of four. Now, I didn't have to sack people. It was just, it was natural. It was as people left, we didn't hire to replace them. As contracts expired, we didn't renew them. And so we ended up, and and so the situation was that business was operating at a loss, and in the end, it was operating at a profit. And that was done through this digital process. I can say that the actual process of the digitalization, I know very little about. But what I was able to do was look at the physical processes in that was in place, discover that they were chronically inefficient, and then was able to then look at mounting a business case in order to to get the investment in the technology. And that all goes back to return on invested capital being higher than the funding cost. So it's 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 a common theme. If you're going to run a business, it has to run in in that way. Kurt, that was an absolute masterpiece. Thank you so much. Maybe to, to wrap up, is there anything else you'd like to add on the different topics we touched upon, whether it's about the ACTA or um, how can treasurers go from support function to actual business partners? Anything you'd like to, to mention? I think we've covered it pretty comprehensively, um, mm-hmm. actually, but I, I think in closing, uh, I'd say that I think we're incredibly lucky to be working in a really interesting, challenging, and rewarding field. Um, and I think that's that's why people who get to be treasurers don't leave very often until they retire. Um, it's because of those things. And that's because I think the success of the company is in our hands. Uh, you, you can have the board and the C-suite coming up with you know corporate strategy but in the end if if we can't fund it it's not going to happen and and so there's a i think that means there's a real opportunity for us to to have a very rewarding career and i think we should be grateful to be in in a position of of influence and and, and trust in, in terms of actor actor's done a lot for me and and as i say i was quite a reluctant networker and turned up and tended to stand in the corner of the room a little bit. Um, I was welcomed into uh, into the fold with open arms. Um, and I'm trying now to to do uh, what was done for me to, to a lot of other people. It, it's a terrific association. It's got some very talented people. And I'm very keen to, to reach out to as many people around the world as possible. One of the very good things about COVID is that we're all equipped to communicate in this way now. Um, and it's, it's, it's great that um, I can have clients on the other side of Australia because it really doesn't, you know, we, we can, we've got a digital solution. And I would say the same for, for Acta. Happy to speak and reach out to anybody. Amazing. 
Thank you so much. Um, if people would like to know more about you, the ACTA, or eventually reach out, or even know more about Marengo Capital, where, where should they go? We have a website for, uh, for ACTA. So it's, if you put in ACTA Treasury, one word, so A-C-T-A Treasury, one word, um, then it will come up and you'll see the Australian Corporate Treasury Association. You can click on there and see see what we do and, and reach out to us through through that means. For Marengo Capital, I, I I run my business hopefully how I've how I tell other people to run theirs. I don't have a website. Um, it uh, it costs me more money than what I generate out of it, so I don't do it at this point. Um, but people can message me on on LinkedIn if they like, and uh, I would um, yeah I would like that. Um, hopefully, a lot of people reach out. I will um, I will get back to you and and then we can uh, open up communication channels that way amazing we'll put all the links in the description Kurt thank you so much thank you I really appreciate the invite and I've um, I've enjoyed the chat thanks very much <laughs>